let's solve some logarithmic equations. So it looks like every example I'm going to do that is the common log. These are gonna be the last few, okay, that I'm gonna do. So if you already know how to do these first few, that gives you the opportunity to know that you can just like fast forward through this lovely little video and get to what um, you need help with. But let's look at these. Um, you would solve, even though it would, if you solve any and it's the natural log, remember the natural log is a, a lowercase l and a lowercase n. That stands for the natural log. This always, always, always has a base e. So don't forget that. This common log, you can see my base four and two. If it doesn't have a log, like right here, you don't see, excuse me, if it doesn't have a base, you know, at least you're supposed to know, that it has base 10, okay? So if you don't see one, it's base 10. So let's hope these all work out. So what you're gonna do here, when you have more than one log, you're gonna do the combination rules that you know. So I'm gonna take these two and make them one, okay? That's one way to do it. Um, that's typically what I do. Now that I look over here and this is a zero, and I'm gonna do this one both ways. I would probably move this one to the other side. Okay, I'm gonna show you both ways. So I've got this. When this is a minus sign, if I move it to the other side, it would be a positive. So, and it's just a zero, so I'm gonna have this. Now, here's what I like about this one, if you catch this. I have a log base four equal to a log base four. Since they're equal, I know what we're taking the log of must be equal. So that means I can take 3x minus 7 equal to 2x plus 3 and then solve. So I'm going to bring the 2x to this side, so track 2x from both sides, which gives me x, add 7 to this side, which gives me 10. So I should get x is 10. Now I'm going to go back up there, always, always when you're working with logs, remember you can't take the log of a negative and you can't take the log of zero. So I, in my, I'm just trying to make sure, yeah, that's gonna give me a positive number, 30 minus, that'll give me a positive number. So I feel pretty good about that answer. Okay, now, if you didn't think to do it that way, here's another way you can do this, okay? One way is not better than the other, but I can take these two and make them one. Remember, you can combine, since I'm subtracting, you can make the two one by dividing. So this guy's gonna go on the top. Whatever I'm subtracting by goes on the bottom. Okay, so I've got that. So I only wrote the, the function log one time. Now remember, if you wanna write this in exponential form, this is your base, this is your exponent. So I would be like, okay, four to the zero equals three x minus seven over two x plus three. So it's four to the zero. Well, do you remember anything to the zero power is one? Okay, so I've got that. I would get rid of my denominator by multiplying both sides by two x plus three. Well, look, one times that gives me two x plus three. These cancel, so I have three x minus seven. And look, I'm right back where I started. Okay, so I feel like that one's maybe a little bit more difficult, but you use this uh, method of taking several and making them one. So, and the only reason this works is because it was set equal to zero. Down here, not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to use the method of take the two and make them one. So most they're both log base two. I am adding. So to make the two one, you are going to combine them by multiplying. So it's gonna look like this. Okay, now at that point, I'm gonna put it in exponential form. This is your base, this is your exponent. So it's two to the third equals x plus one times x minus one. Two to the third is eight. Let's hope these work out. These middle terms, that's negative x plus x cancels. That gives me what, minus one, one times negative one. So we're gonna solve this. I'm gonna go ahead, there's two ways you can solve this, but I'm gonna add this, this gives me nine. Take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you take the square root, it's plus or minus. So it looks like x is gonna be plus or minus three. Okay, but be careful, my three works. That gives me positive, three minus one is two, that's positive, so I know my three works. But notice if I plug in a negative three, negative three plus one, well that'd give me a negative two. So 
I don't even care about that one. So my only answer is the one. You have to throw out the negative, okay? So that one only has one answer, check your answers. Okay, we're gonna do this one as well. Now, all of these are different and I like that because that makes you have to think. I can move all of this to one side and make it equal to zero and do it kind of like we did the one up there, but I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these two and make them one. Since I'm subtracting, I make the two one by dividing. I know, isn't that crazy? It's those rules of exponents though. So here's what I have. Now, here's what's cool. You have a log with base 10, you don't see it, so I know it's base 10, equal to a log with base 10. Since I have a log equal to a log, I know that what I'm taking the log of has to be equal. So I can basically just drop the function log. You're not canceling it, don't do that. So then I'm gonna multiply both sides by my common denominator, which is x minus three. So I'll show that, I guess. Try it, try it. So these cancel. So I have x plus five equals, let's distribute, two x minus six. <clears throat> that gives me what, x equals 11, because I'm gonna add six to both sides. So before I crunch it in, I'm gonna double check that that does not give me a negative. Nope. That isn't giving me a negative. 11 plus five, definitely a positive number. 11 minus three is positive. I feel good about that answer, okay? Now, realize I could have moved this over here, okay? And then I could have set it equal to zero, and then it would have been done like this one, okay? And we'll do some more. You're just gonna have to kind of play with it and see what you like, okay? Now notice I have a log equal to a log, but I have this number right here written right in front of my function log. Remember what that does? It puts him up here. So I could write it like this. To the one half equals the log of x, okay? Now, I don't know if you remember this. You could leave it like that, okay? Or realize that's the same thing as the square root. So I'm gonna write, and we have a log equal to a log. So I'm gonna take what I have equal. You can basically just drop the log because since you have one log equal to one log, I know what I'm taking the log of has to be equal. You can leave it like this and square both sides, okay? But I do want you to realize that when you have something to the one half, it's the same thing. That's what that means, okay? So either way, when you do this, you're gonna to wanna to square both sides. These are opposite operations. And you can see if I would have multiplied this by two, do you see how those cancel and it gives me it to the first power? However you do it, you have three x plus four equals x squared. Anytime you have something squared, you wanna set it equal to zero and factor. And you're gonna be like, well, you didn't do that up here. Well, I could have. Remember you had x squared equals nine? I could have moved this nine over. That's a difference of squares, and I, sh I sure could have factored. That would have been x minus three, or x plus three, x minus three, however you wanna do it, and then solve that. And I would have still gotten the same answers and then double checked. Okay, so if you have a squared term, set it equal to zero. So, oh, this guy's positive. I'm gonna move everything over here with him. So realize when I move this three x over, he's positive on this side, so when I move him over here, he's a negative. And this four is positive, so when I meet, move him over there, he's negative, so I have this. Factor, hopefully you're good at your factoring skills. I need factors of negative four that add up to negative three. So that should be it, negative four times one is negative four, negative four plus one is negative three, so I can see my answers are four and negative one. Remember, it's what makes it zero, four minus four and negative one plus one. Now. Go back and check these answers. Sometimes if neither one works, it would be no solution. Sometimes they'll both work, even though he's negative. He might work when you plug him back in, so check them both. My four looks fine, but when I plug in my negative one, I can't take the log of a negative, so I'm gonna cross him out, and my answer is only that one thing. Got to the end of my paper. Okay, now let's get to these ones that are <laughs> a little bit more um, interesting. Okay, we've got three logs, so set equal to some constant over here, not a zero, okay? So I'm gonna take the three and we're gonna make him one. I'm trying to clear that up just a little bit. Okay, so 
I've got this, five plus x. He's got several terms, so I'm gonna put him in parentheses. I'm adding, so I know to take the two and make them one, I'm gonna multiply. If you're adding, you combine by multiplying. <gasps> Look, I'm subtracting, which means I'm dividing. Again, I want you to notice I only wrote the function log base three one time. That's what it makes. Okay, and then this equals two. Okay, I know it looks gross, but I promise it's not so bad. So at this point, once I have one log, I'm gonna put it in exponential form. Remember, this is your base, this is your exponent. So I have three to the second equals all that garbage. Blah. And so I've got that. Well, look, three to the second is nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that nine. I would get rid of my fraction. Remember, whatever's in the denominator, multiply both sides by it. So these cancel. Nine times four is 36. And so I've got this. Now, go ahead and FOIL it out. So five times eight is 40. That gives me a negative five X plus eight X, which is what, three X minus X squared. Okay, remember anytime you have an x squared term, it's called a quadratic function, you wanna set it equal to zero. Since this guy's negative, I'm gonna move him over here to make him positive, okay? This is positive, I'm gonna move him over here, it makes him negative. This is positive, I'm gonna move him over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this in one step. 36 minus 40 would be what, negative four? Oh my goodness, this looks just like the other one. Factor him out. Factor, factor, if you hate factoring, use the quadratic formula. But it looks like I still have x equals four and negative one. Now, go back to your original problem. Let's check four. Four is fine. Eight minus four is still positive. So four is fine. Try your negative one. Well, look, even if I put a negative one in there, it's gonna be positive. Even if I put a negative one in there, it's gonna be positive. So guess what? <gasps> Yay, they both work, okay? All right. Last one. Okay, oh my goodness. Uh, you know what I think I'm gonna do here? And I think it's the best thing. I'm gonna move this guy over here with his buddies, okay? And here's something else. So I'm gonna get this constant by itself. So it's gonna look exactly like this one. See how the constant is by itself? And I'm gonna do that. By the way, this number can be anything. I used small numbers, so our problems weren't too crazy. But if I move this guy, see how he's positive? He's gonna be negative. So here's what I'm gonna do. Do you see how this two is written right in front of the word log, the function log? That means this two can be raised up as an exponent. So I've got this log base four of x squared minus log base four of x minus six. When I bring him to the other side, it's gonna be minus. And then I have my two by itself, okay? So I'm gonna make all three of these one. So I'm only gonna write the function log base four one time. This guy's positive, so he's gonna go on the top. If you're subtracting, he's gonna go in the bottom. He's got two terms, so I'm gonna put him in parentheses. And you're subtracting, so this guy's gonna go in the bottom, okay? So notice, I'm gonna use brackets just because that's really ugly. That equals two, okay? So once I get down to one log, I'm gonna write this in exponential form. There's your base, there's your exponent. So it's four to the second equals x squared. And are you okay? I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this two in. That would be two x minus 12, okay? Well, four squared is 16. I've got a fraction, I'm gonna get rid of it. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by whatever's in the denominator, two x minus 12. 2x minus 12. These cancel. I'm gonna distribute them in. Use your lovely calculator, okay? 16 times two is what, 32x. 16 times a negative 12 is uh, 192, negative 192. Okay, I've got an x squared, I'm gonna set him equal to zero. Blah. Because he's positive, I don't wanna move him. So I'm gonna move everything over here with him. So this side, I'm gonna move everything. So I've got my x squared. Because he's positive, when I move him over here, he becomes negative. Sorry, I'm getting to the end of my paper. When this guy's negative, move him over here, he's positive. Now, these are gross, okay? You're gonna to have to mess around. You're gonna to have to find 
two things that multiply together to give you 192, that yet when I add them, I get negative 32. That's an X, by the way. Okay, so because this is positive, I know my signs have to be the same, and this is, so I know they're both negative. Now, I already messed around with this, but when you do this, I took like 192 divided by four, 192 divided by six, okay, whatever, and then I try 192 divided by eight. Find them until you find something that works, okay? But <clears throat> I got this, notice that adds up to 32, and when I multiply it, it gives me a positive 192. So I can see X is eight, or 24. Now, those are big numbers. Go back to your original problem and make sure it's okay. Eight's positive, eight minus six, that's positive. Try your 24, 24 fine, 24 fine. So guess what? They both work. And again, let me remind you, sometimes neither one will work. Remember, you can't take the log of zero, you can't take the log of a negative number. If that happens, it's no solution. Mm -hmm.